Oh man, it's never gonna get old, is it? Seriously, I love getting in this car every day. It's the best feeling, the best feeling. Here we go. <laughs> oh, this thing never gets old. So just arrived at Yashio factory. Gonna get inside, see what uh, we've got to get done today. This JZX100's in for uh, getting fixed. One of uh, Okachan's good customers uh, has this as kind of like a missile. And uh, for some reason, it's uh, not getting any spark whatsoever. And there's a few other things in the engine, uh, like in the cabin and stuff that aren't getting power, which is really bizarre because all the fuses are fine. You see they've gone and changed out a few things like igniters and stuff like that. But they're going through it, trying to figure out why it doesn't have power to certain circuits. But for now, ooh. This fresh new wing looks sexy. I think that's for my car. And this thing's going in today. It's got the downpipe there. Oh man, they look so good. Yashio factory exhaust manifold and downpipe. These are, are gonna be available uh, for you guys to purchase as well on the Otaku Garage website soon. I'm just sorting out uh, pricing and stuff for international um, customers and stuff like that with Okachan. But anyways, let's go see what's up, get to work. Okay. So here's the plan today. Fukusawa-san is going to be dropping this engine into that S15. While I'm going to be working on this, uh, we've already got the seal for where the propeller shaft or the, drive sh the tail shaft connects to the gearbox. So that'll stop that little bit of transmission leaking there. Once we get the car jacked up, I'll show you how there's a little bit leaking out there and it's sprayed on the bottom of the body. That's where the smells come from. Um, new wing is getting installed on the back of the car, which is the same wing that Okachan runs on this car. You guys see here in the rear. So pretty pumped to be sporting that wing. And then the second thing is this engine cover is going on my SR. So we're gonna let things cool down for a bit because to work down there where the propeller shaft and everything like that is, it's pretty hot right now. Same with everything in the engine bay here is really hot. We also noticed this. They shaved out the Nissan logo so that it would clearance this, but there's plenty of clearance there, so I have no idea why they did that. So, it's a bit weird. But we're also taking the strut uh, brace off. We don't need that. Okachan advises, there's no, pretty much just said, I, you don't need to run it, and uh, it, it'll actually feel better. So, we're gonna take that off with his advice. Obviously, we'll keep it just in case we need it in the future. But for now, take it off, put the new cover on, make this engine bay pop match up with the paint and everything like that. Oh man, I'm excited getting this thing dialed in even more. Okay, so we're tag teaming a little bit right now. Okachan is working on mounting the wing on the back. He's already drilled the first hole there that you can see into my new paint job. Well, it's hard to see, but you can also see the smaller holes he's drilled on this side, the big ones there. Um, so he's getting the wing all mounted up, but uh, I took the engine cover off and we made a little bit of a discovery um, that we're gonna fix right away. Um, also, this is, by the way, just FYI guys, this is what a real low kilometers, low mileage SR20 from Japan should look like. Anything that's got oil stains and lots of black stuff in here is not really a low kilometers motor. That only happens with like crazy amounts of mileage and um, uh, like no servicing as well. But even if you're not servicing, you're still not gonna see that till like over like a couple, like 150,000 Ks. So this is what a really nice, clean, low mileage SR20 should look like. Also, HKS adjustable cam on the exhaust side. We're probably going to remove that though because you just don't need it. And um, we're going to inspect what cams are in here and Okachan's thinking about maybe changing them. We're also going to take these rocker stoppers out because rocker stoppers are the devil. They cause more harm than good. So we're going to remove those as well. Um, and we're just going to tidy a few more things up. So right now I've got to re remove the tensioner. We've already moved it to top dead center. As you can see there, we've marked it out. Um, uh, also, a really quick, easy way to know if your engine's at top dead center on SRs is, let me just put the light down for a second. 
your cam lobes here for uh, intake and exhaust are both should be pointing that way and that way. So, sorry, intake should be pointing that way and exhaust should be pointing that way. They should be horizontal, flat. So you can see there, that lobe's pointing that way and that lobe's pointing that way. Uh, and then obviously as well, your two markings should be about here. And there should be roughly, I think it's 11 linkages. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hang on, I counted that wrong. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven linkages with, between the two. Pretty cool. SRs, I'm, I'm learning a lot today, and uh, this is awesome. I love learning new stuff, and SRs have been something that I've been curious about for ages. I mean, other than the fact that they sound terrible <laughs> compared to an RV, um, they put out a lot of torque, and I think I proved that last night when I took this thing for a rip. Anyways, we're gonna keep working on it. Um, a simple engine cover change turned into potentially changing cams and getting rid of exhaust, uh, uh, exhaust uh, cam gear, because you just don't need that, and rocker arms, we're gonna get rid of those too. Anyways, rocker stopper arms, that's what I meant. Rocker stoppers, that's what I meant. All right, cool. Little bit of a momentous moment here. Rocker stoppers. There's only one place that these belong. In the bin. Well, things have escalated a little bit. We've got all the cams out and everything apart. Everything laid out there perfectly on the box and uh, they're checking them now to see what's happening, what version cams they are, if Okachan wants to change it. But look at this, my car has a wing. How cool is that? I didn't even have to do anything. Okachan did it all, he's a bit tired. But uh, no, he's not really tired, he's just writing his blog right now. Anyways, um, that looks sick. I really love that. At some, time, at some point in the future, I also want to get one of these big, massive carbon wangs that Okachan makes, like what's on his Time Attack car here, GT style wing. I definitely want to go for something like that in the future as well, just for like, you know, baller big wang effect. But for now, we've got a nice little bit of modest wang, which I think looks really sick. We'll get some better, better shots of this later. But uh, for now, um, I think what we're going to do is um, I'm waiting to find out what cams these are. They are a HKS, we just don't know if they're step one or step two. Um, we're gonna probably remove this exhaust side gear because you just don't need that. And uh, uh, I'll probably sell it to UpGarage with this strut brace because I just don't need them either. Anyways, let's get to work. Ooh, eh, yeah, changey. Change. Okay, we're changing cams apparently, guys. <laughs> All right then. So we're changing over the cams now. We've already changed over uh, the VCT gear onto the new cams. Um, and we've just removed this off the old one because that's no longer needed and we removed this off a normal cam that we had sitting spare from another engine and we're going to put this onto the new cam here and uh, then we'll put it all back in the engine. Kind of kind of wish we could, uh, like I kind of like the purple HKS cam gear but these slip from time to time, they can loosen and slip so and, and there's no point in having it in my engine because you just don't change your exhaust timing at all, there's no point. Uh, especially with the setup that we're running. So a uh, little bit of Loctite on that sucker. And then uh, you pretty much hold the cam with uh, a pair of shifters. And then uh, rattle gun, ugga dugga the thing on. So just sat the new cams in and Fukusawa-san's going around and pre-lubing all the lobes and everything so that when we put it all in and tighten it down that there's some oil at least on there. So when it cranks over for the first time, ain't gonna have any uh, metal on metal friction action. Cause uh, yeah, you guys always know the deal. Lube first.
So we just got the cover on and damn, does that look beautiful. But time for the final touch, Yashio factory oil cap. Bam. Kinda wish I uh, put the sticker on once I already had it on though. So that way I could have had it lined up, but eh, same old, same old. Looks awesome nonetheless. The magic plug. Okay. I'm gonna start her up. We just finished cranking it to make sure everything is all good. Here we go. Oh, straight to life. Sounds good. Sounds like it's idling a bit higher than it used to, but that could also be its, it's uh, warm up, warm up uh, table. Oh yeah, sounds all good to me though. Get some oil pressure pumping. Uh, we do need to check the timing light and just make sure the timing's all good as well, but we'll do that in a little bit. Looking good though. Look at our son, such a champ. All right, so we're wrapping up here today. This car, because our son got the motor sitting in there and everything, he's just got to put the uh, gearbox in tomorrow. It's also got uh, the front pipe on there too, which uh, is kind of like the down pipe that connects to the elbow off the back of the turbo. It's it's weird, but in Japanese they call that the front pipe and then they call this a turbo elbow, but we would just call that whole piece of down pipe in Australia. But anyways, so he's got the motor sitting in there, so that thing will probably be honestly back together and running tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, we gotta finish this S13 off, which the customer's picking up tomorrow. And then maybe we'll be putting the mission, this thing, in that white S15 tomorrow. Who knows? It feels so weird to be driving the Skyline again. This thing is so much bigger, it's insane. Also, the steering in this is like way lighter, so maybe just bigger power steering pump or something, I don't know, but it's insane like going from chassis to chassis just how much of a difference it is. Like, this thing feels like such a big boat around me <laughs> compared to what the S15 does. Oh boy. I mean, I, I do apologize guys. Probably for like the next week of videos, I'm gonna be talking a lot about comparing the two cars, but that's probably good for a lot of you guys who are like tossing up whether or not to get an S chassis or an R chassis. I still will always say that an R33 Skyline right now is super cheap and affordable and a good chassis to learn to drift in no matter what. So if you guys are looking at getting into drifting in 33s are cheap where you live, definitely snap one up, especially in Australia and Japan. Um, in the States, I wouldn't get a 33, that's for sure. Those are way too expensive over there. Anyways, uh, we're gonna actually go pick up May from her work and then we're gonna probably get dinner and head home. So we got the wifey and we are at this beautiful Thai restaurant for dinner. We got some spring rolls. I thought there'd be more than just two spring rolls when we ordered that as an appetizer, but... What you're eating? Muffin and curry. How good is it? Hey, it's, this is really good. I'm, I ordered so good. a green curry. Man, this is... They changed our recipe and everything. It's really good. <laughs> so good. I don't think you really are Australian, Sam. Yeah. The, the way you eat Asian food is like... Seriously, like, there are days that, don't get me wrong, there are days when I miss Western food, but that's like, you know, burgers and fries. But Asian food, there's just something about it that makes my soul happy. All right, so back home and epic dinner, so full. In fact, I'm fighting the urge to just go pass out right now from food coma, it's ridiculous. But today, there's a few things I wanna clarify for you guys. I realized when watching the video, I never really explained why we switched out the cams. And I also wanna talk about why rocker stoppers are a bad thing in your SR. So first of all, cams. Um, Okachan said that earlier than 2009, so 2009 after is okay, but from 2009 earlier, uh, there's a really bad uh, make of HKS cams in the step one um, category that just were, were really bad for the low end and you get idle issues and stuff like that. You may have noticed that my car kind of duped down a little bit in idle and a few things like that. Um, as well as it didn't have as much torque as it should have in the low end, apparently to me, I just think there's heaps of torque there because I'm used to an RB. But uh, yeah, anyways, so the moment Okachan realized that they were the older versions, he was like, Here, here's a brand new set, switch them out. We did that. Um, and at the same time, obviously, uh, I got rid of those rocker stoppers. So um, new cams are in. Okachan's gonna just recheck the tune tomorrow, so that'll be dialed in. Um, but with rocker stoppers, uh, the reason why Okachan, you don't need rocker stoppers at all, not even in high horsepower applications. And the reason for that is they just end up causing more damage than good. 
Um, they don't really stop the rockers from coming off and, and falling out. Um, if they're gonna come off, they're gonna come off. If there's a rocker stopper there, it jams on it and then breaks a cam, breaks the rocker stopper, metal shards go through your engines. As in, if you don't have rocker stoppers in there, the, the rocker just falls out and just moves out of the way. And it doesn't break, it doesn't shatter, it doesn't break a cam, it doesn't damage anything in the head um, or send metal shards through your engine. So at the end of the day, it's better for you to just have a rocker fall off, take the, the, the valve cover off and just pop it back on than having to uh, deal with metal shards through your engine, damaged head, you need a whole new head, um, snapped cams, like all the damage that it does in there. And I, like, I've like i seen it firsthand. I've seen it firsthand at an Okajuku. Someone's uh, lost a, 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 he wasn't even hitting limited that hard either. It was insane. But his rocker came off. He had rocker stoppers. The rocker stopper itself ripped in two and was split. The, the rocker as well was like completely shattered. The cam was destroyed. The head was destroyed. The, the whole thing, like the whole head pretty much had to go in the bin. Needed a new head, new cams, um, and, and new rockers. So like, it's just, it's not worth it. And I've seen it happen more than once too. Like not only here in Japan, but also in Australia. So guys, it's not worth spending money on rocker stoppers because if a rocker is gonna come off, it's gonna come off. If there's a stopper in the way, it's gonna break lots of stuff and uh, it's just gonna cost you more. So don't spend money on rocker stoppers to then cause you to end up having to pay more money in the long run. That's what it is. Um, so yeah, that's why Okachan hates them because everyone preaches and advertises them as something that prevents it, but it doesn't prevent it. In fact, when it does happen, it just makes it a thousand times worse. Anyways, ranting aside <laughs> for rocker stoppers and why I hate them so much and why Okachan hates them so much and, and everything, I feel like it's like the biggest lie. Uh, anyways, uh, let's stop. Um, hope you enjoyed today's video. I really did. I learned a lot about the SR platform today, pulling it apart and reassembling it and everything like head wise and, and cam wise and timing wise. So that was really cool and just being able to wrap my brain around how that all works now. Very different to the RB. Um, and with that, I don't know what else to say, but thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. We're close to 100K. Get your friends involved and get them watching the channel if they haven't already. And uh, leave us a comment. Smash that like button so hard. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, Jamata.